Well, that was perfect timing heater. Literally just as I'm about to hit the start record button. SMH, man. Anyway, Sforza, we're back. Blood and betrayal. Let's go. Visconti's death left Milan in turmoil. Outlying towns rebelled and Venice threatened the city. By way of marriage, Sforza held a better claim on Milan than anyone. But strangely, the ambitious captain did not take his dowry. He allowed the lawyers and professors of Milan to fashion a republic with all the trappings and corruption of the old Roman one. They called it the Golden Ambrosian Republic after St. Ambrose. But there was nothing blessed or saintly about this republic. Surrounded by enemies, the Republicans of Milan more skilled at reading books than leading men into war, needed a captain to command the war against Venice. Sforza, by now employed by the Venetians along with his compatriots Malatestra and Micheletto, did not miss an opportunity to once again betray those who paid him, as well as those closest to him. Rescinding his own claims on Milan, he agreed to serve the Republic against his own cousin Micheletto in exchange for control of the city of Brescia. The leaders of the Republic agreed, even though there were many rumblings that Sforza could not be trusted. After all, for a piece of land, he was now marching against his own blood. Well, there's the betrayal bit. Uh, destroy the castle in Caravaggio, uh, destroy the castle in Piacenza, Piacenza, and destroy the Venetian castle in Lodi. We are restricted to a poplar of 200, like all the other ones. Barricades block your way across the bridge. While destroying them will allow you to attack your enemies on land, your enemies will be able to attack you as well. This is kind of interesting. Cremona can be reached by ship, but weigh the benefits of a second base with the need to defend two locations at once. Also kind of interesting. Ancient relics can be recovered from old shipwrecks along the riverbanks. Sforza, now the Captain General of the Ambrosian Republic, has reached the cities of the Po River Valley. He plans to conquer them from Milan in exchange for a fiefdom, fiefdom in Brescia. The Venetians are commanded by Sforza's cousin and erstwhile companion, uh, Micheletto Attendolo. Uh, Micheletto prefers to field cavaliers, condottieri, hand cannoneers, and organ guns. What? Well, I guess... You, they have Italian allies, I can just build condos, Bleh. But he will adjust his uh, tactics to best counter Sforza. Piacenza and Caravaggio are two cities in league with Venice. They will attack with a mix of unit types. And uh, Cremona is friendly to Milan and will surrender as soon as Sforza reaches it. Oh. Signore, the Venetians command Loda in the center. The towns of Caravaggio and Piacenza are in league with them must also be subjugated by the Republic. Kind of weird how they, like, force you to look at all the cities, like, yep, those are the some cities. The east will surrender to us once we reach it. We can use these bridges to cross the Po, but know that the barricades block our enemies from crossing as well. Yep. And then it's like they, oh, goodbye. So yeah, this one is. Return to Milan, Francesco. <clears throat> I have no quarrel with you. Leave the Republicans to fend for themselves, and both of us will be rich men. As I was saying, Micheletto, this scenario is a little bit different. It's at least more interesting than the last one. Oh boy. I literally took a nap after playing it. I mean, not because of it, but, you know, that makes a better story. <laughs> so we have the this whole... <clears throat> I would never want to hurt you, but you leave me no choice. I told you I must make a name for myself. I cannot live in your shadow any longer. 
as I was saying, Micheletto. Oh wait, we have a lumber camp here. The, uh, the whole aspect of, okay, you can cross the, the Po River uh, and get to Cremona on the, on the other side of the map whenever you want. But then you'll have to defend two locations. And also, you don't start with a dock. And your enemies are like, you know, pretty strong naval powers. At least uh, Piacenza and the Venetians are. And of course, like, we can destroy the barricades to go by land, but, uh, I like not being able to be attacked so I can boom. <laughs> so I think what we're going to do is we're just going to get our eco set up over here and then try and fight our way on to water when we're able to do so, which shouldn't be all that long because we are an Imperial Age. Yeah, we have, like, a pretty okay amount of resources to get going. Okay. Random audio lag strikes again. So, yeah, I would dock, but uh, the navies of the Venetians and Piacenza will uh, wreck me. Also, the Venetians are Portuguese, like they are in every single scenario in this campaign. Not because that makes sense historically, but, you know, just for gameplay diversity. Portugal never had uh, any power in northern Italy. Whoa, you see that lady? See that lady? She's just walking in place. She's just, she's just doing the, the moonwalk right there. She's, she is going nowhere fast. Anyway, uh, I guess we got some uh, condottieri nearby, but I mean, they won't really be doing a whole lot for us. Condo, yes, those are the units that I that I received. Thank you, Miss Lady Villager. Uh, we start with, you know, one of each main military building, but again, we're not really focused on land so much as uh, water least to start. Even if you take water control, you can't uh, destroy any of the castles from the water. I mean, Caravaggio is even pretty far away from the water. At least as I remember it. Yep. You can see they, they all have pretty decent navies already. Aw, oh, come on, they're dumb villagers. With the multi-pig. Oh, building that with one villager. Maybe I could have gotten that up a bit faster. Well, I'm gonna lose a house, whatever. No! No bolty pigging! That's a word now. Go take these forage bushes. So yeah, this one will have a little bit more of a peaceful beginning. But that's fine. So, unfortunately, because we went three town centers, we're not actually going to have enough stone for a castle unless we buy it. 
which is probably what we're just going to do. Because there's only one tile of stone on our starting. Well, I mean, it's not actually an island, but as far as this map is concerned, it's an island. Go back to reading Greek books with your Republican masters, Francesco. I would then never read a book. Honor, fight for Italy. All right, now things are starting to get a bit more happening with our economy. Now, what I do remember is that the warships will attack you when you try to mine that stone. But even if I can mine that 350 stone, then it would make getting a castle cheaper and faster. Or at least a cheaper and faster process. Oh, I'm gonna go with no, they're not gonna let me gather that stone. Okay, I gotta do this the hard way. God damn it. Set un problem. Okay, we're literally just gonna have to buy our way onto water. Which is going to be a uh, rather expensive process, but you know, you gotta do what you gotta do. I don't really think it's the best idea to try and take water when you're so, uh, still with such a weak economy. Same with attacking on land, because your enemies have infinite resources. I think. Actually, maybe not. I don't honestly remember. I mean, we'll find out in due course. Oh, seriously? Jerks? Just get guilds. I mean, it's not like it, it won't be useful later anyway. You guys can build the castle. I guess you could have just go with towers. Why didn't why didn't I think of that before? It's not like Italians don't have heated shot. You fight your own blood for the sake of a sliver of Milanese bread. Hey man, you gotta do what you gotta do. It's honest, honest hustle. So our economy isn't great, but as you can see by the amount <laughs> in, uh, that we're getting bombarded, we really need to do something sooner rather than later. But half price Italian dock tax is really going to come in handy. Oh, yeah, university. Okay, let's let's really not let these villagers all get wrecked. Let's 
see if we can <laughs> squeeze out a few fishing ships just because I'm, I'm a greedy boomer boy. I could wait <laughs> five seconds and get a 35% wood discount. Peoples. But yeah, with heated shot, the tower is going to at least help out a little bit. Going with fast fire ships because that's the best ship for taking back water. Especially since our opponents have galleons anyway. Anyway, this should probably be enough. Go ahead and grab Dry Dock as well. I mean, minus 50% is a huge discount. It's really sick. And yeah, Shipwright is just such an important tech. Like, yes, I think Shipwright... Well, I don't know, maybe Elite Cannon Galleon's like technically more resources, but Shipwright is the most important tech that or it's the tech that is most benefiting from the discount because it's a tech that you not only want like with any civ that has it but you want it quickly like as soon as you hit imperial age Yeah, you can see that they have pretty strong defenses. Freaking burn this hand cannoneer. Oh yeah, there's a relic. Forgot about that. Let's go build a monastery. No, not the fishing ships! Unfortunately, fire ships are terrible for attacking into defenses. But, uh, only so much you can do about that. Help our docks survive a bit longer. Yeah, that Elite Kangalian discount is also pretty nice. Normally, like a little over 500, 500. Karak helps versus the fire ships a lot because it gives you a little bit of melee armor. At least that's what I would guess. But now that we have some semblance of water control, or at least nobody has definitive water control, now we can switch back into galleons because they're still going to be the most cost efficient thing. Well, soon to be galleons. Let's go get a transport ready. Perfect. Progress. But yeah, you can, <clears throat> excuse me. You can see that we definitely can't range any of the castles or anything.
Um, you guys can all come on the, the party ship. Actually, I'm gonna get another transport ship just for the monk, so that we don't have to waste time with a detour. There's another relic right there. Okie dokie. Onward to the other side of the map. forgot about those two random villagers. I, I don't know why you get them. <laughs> like, I don't know what they do. Anyway, Cremona's somewhere around here. We once rode together, cousin. Cities and women alike were no match for us. Now you come to my doorstep as an enemy. Uh, women aren't objects to be conquered, Mikleto. Hashtag feminism. Lol. Wait. I sailed right past this relic, like a buffoon. Anyway, here we see the, the limits and the utility of water control at this point. Seriously? These units have no upgrades. No, not the two villagers! Oh, yeah, the relic right there. Anyway, let's get some ranges. Also, we need a blacksmith. some of these guys over. There's a monastery over here, right? Yeah. Anyway, I mean, I honestly don't really care if Sforza lives or dies. He's not that great. At least not in an Imperial Age context. I mean, I guess I can use more than one villager. <laughs> yeah, we'll get a, a few relics at least. Oh. Wait, do you guys have another dock? Or are you guys hiding another dock? You rascals, you. Anyway, um, we'll go for Caravaggio first, because, well, Piacenza can't attack us, because they're behind the barricades. Whereas uh, the Venetians and Caravaggio can. Oh, they do land you. Those guys. Find some stone. Well, I'll rip those guys. Because I sure as hell don't have any military production over here. But this island's pretty much worn out its usefulness anyway. 
pretty much <laughs> completely decimated the island of all natural resources. I'm gonna get some more galleons though, just to clean up whatever remnants of ships or whatever. Ah, yes, there is one more dock. Get a trebuchet as well. Okay, you kill the transport ship. You guys go finish off these docks that are being ever so slightly annoying. Also, we're gonna... We don't have it like anyone to trade with. And gold is very much a limited resource. Am I even a... Yeah, I do. So we're gonna get some Hussars. as our trash unit as Italians do not have pikemen. Also, Hussars kill skirmishers. Oh, there's some more gold. That's always nice to see. Oh, I, I do have a condo over here still. Yeah, I am down to 46 villagers. Oh my god, these galleons all got distracted by over here. Ugh. Anywho, let's get this going. And they do make skirmishers. And we are going to need Bombard Towers. Come on. Is a rather large amount of units. But this is pretty much the best army we can go for in this circumstance. I thought we killed all of you! Okay, well, we still have control of water. We just need to actually reboom a bit on land here on uh, this side. Ah, Genbos. They are mixing some of those guys in. But so long as we can keep most of our Arbalusts alive at any given time, we're still all, all right. Necessarily great, but all right. That is a lot of skirmishers. I don't remember this one being so grindy. Come on.
We will need to bust in. This should help. Three relics is nice. It's like I'm playing a multiplayer late game. But I'm pretty sure they do have infinite units, fam. Villager it up. And that's something people should do more in their own multiplayer games. If, if you're in late game and you lost a bunch of villagers just due to raiding or whatever, don't be afraid to make more. The villager <laughs> is not disabled as soon as you hit Imperial Age. But in Age of Empires, Long games usually means who has the most resources and who has, you know, the best army composition and map positioning and all that stuff. But a big part is most resources. You still haven't killed this freaking doc? Morons. Anywho, Caravaggio's castle's right there. I'm pretty sure they become your ally or whatever. They either become your ally or resign. Whatever the case, they cease to become a threat. Or they cease being a threat. As soon as you take down their castles. Wait, you can reach the castle from right there? No, you can't. You're just an idiot. Very, very, very slowly take down this castle. Start pushing this way towards the Venetians. Yeah, their entire army is weak to Arbalests. I guess except organ guns, but that's kind of neither here nor there. That is a lot of condos, though. And then you too, trebuchet, dumbass. Okay, well, that's one city down. The 51 minute mark. Okay, looks like they're starting to mix in some skirms. Get some more vills on that project. Maybe these guys don't have infinite resources? I don't know. Okay, so they resign.
but that is a bombard tower. Lovely ambulance sounds in the background. Yeah, you can see that they're trying to counter our mostly Arbalest army with a lot of skirmishers, but that's why we have Hussars. Gold, 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 gold is running low. Forward. And we'll be able to range the castle, which can't have full defense HP upgrades because Portuguese don't get hoardings. So that will at least be a little bit quicker to take out. Then we'll just go around the river and take out Piacenza. Oh, there's some more gold over here. That's nice. Honestly, I don't even think I need to worry about sending more villagers or bombard towers or whatever that way. Um, what are you guys doing? Man, it takes a long time to destroy castles with... <laughs> with defense upgrades uphill without siege engineers, because Italians don't get it. And most defensive civilizations don't have siege engineers. Italians, Byzantines, Chinese. Is not enough to win my fight. I told you that I will not be overshadowed by you. But will you be undershadowed by me? Anyway, these all have a thousand HP, so we're just gonna take them down. Doesn't seem like they have any armor either. Well, you guys are worthless. Oh, boy. I guess my ships can help out a bit. Looks like these guys make champions and light cav. Wait, what? Let's just send in a captram. Okay. Come on, guys. They killed the ram. Okay, how about you guys? Also, I think I inadvertently sent my Bombard Tower villagers over to make farms. The fool I was! All right, that's open.
Now we get to watch 13 capped rams try and cross a bridge with units on them. Or units on it. I keep on being surprised why the scores are so close, and then I keep on forgetting that the scores are bugged right now in DE. At least until the patch that comes out in probably a little less than a week at this point. That is a big old army. Oh, don't build a mining camp. Let's make sure we're not uphill. Attack! That is a huge frickin' army, man. Anyway. Oh, looks like I actually have high ground here. That's helpful. Anyway, there we go. I mean, look. We'll, what the? Remember that. Empia Chenzo was an apparition the whole time. I bring terrible news, Signore. Milan has made peace with Brescia. Your promised payment has been taken out of your hands by betrayers. Betrayal. So yeah, I mean it was just Piacenza with a big old area to the south. Caravaggio was definitely the smallest town. But it looks like that they weren't with infinite resources. So that's nice. I guess I could have been a bit more active in raiding then with some hussars. Or maybe some ships. Get the volume. Though Milan grew stronger with Sforza's victories, the Republicans came to fear and hate him. Didn't they already say they that? They saw Sforza as a Caesar intending to topple their new republic. These bookish professors and lawyers listened intently to two agitators who had returned to Milan. Two brothers with harsh words and a fierce vendetta against Sforza. The sons of none other than Piccinino swore vengeance upon Sforza. They incited the Republicans to betray him by signing a secret truce with Brescia before Sforza could take that city. This, of course, angered the Condottiero. He had agreed to serve the Republic only in exchange for the city. Stifling the ambitions of a man like Sforza was a fatal mistake. Uh-oh, SpaghettiOs! Yeah, Piacenza had 170 military! Holy crap, they had a huge army. Three relics is definitely nice. I guess you can just get an army that big if you only have 40 villagers and you're just left to your own devices all game long. Anyway, that was Blood and Betrayal. Next, and finally for Sforza, will be Viva Sforza! See you guys then.